the last part in chapter 3 uh, we would like to see when the structure having a non-uniform cross-sectional area to understand better the non-uniform cross-sectional area problem let's do the example okay let's say by using three elements with equal length determine the displacement at the free end of this two millimeter thickness aluminium tin plate and the modulus yang for this plate is 70 gigapascal. Okay, here is the, our problem. We having this type of plate. Okay, so we have um, a non-uniform bar. Okay, is a hanging, and then we in this uh, example let uh, ignore the weight of the of the bar. Okay, this is the front view, meaning that he had the thickness two millimeter and he has a rectangular shape cross section okay rectangular cross section and the applied load is the end of the bar which is two kilo newton all right so the first step of course we have to create the nodes element and also determine the degree of freedom okay so let's draw the outline shape okay and then we try to um set the length element as the question asks us to have it, uh, to to create elements with equal length so we divide uh, this 600 into three um, sections so that each mem um, element will have 200 millimeter length okay and next step we will like to um, create the nodes okay of course not one to represent the uh, the the beginning of the structure or the fixed joint support the second one okay uh, we have to create at that border because we want to uh, to create the element with an equal length that's why we have to create the element here even though we see that here's nothing happened here as but we need to fulfill the equation uh, the, the, the questions that required us to having uh, to have uh, an equal length elements so we have to create here not two as well as not three here so that we would have an equal length elements okay and the last one at the end of the structure so if we draw uh, our elements so we we will have three elements as required by the questions okay and now we also fulfill the, the requirement is to, ha to have an equal length of the elements. And in this case, U1 are fixed. So U1 equal to 0. But U2, U3 and U4, all these nodes are free, free to move. Okay, are free to move. So that's why in this um, example, we have three elements and three degree of freedom. So what would be our next step? Is it to calculate the K matrix? Let's try. So in a K matrix, remember, we have AE over L. So now we're talking about A here. So this A, okay, which A that we should use? This A or this A? Because this A, Okay, we have the cross section will be this one. It's rectangular cross section. Okay, and then this one with longer length. So we have, let's say, A1 and A2. So which A we should, should we use? If you use A1, meaning that our element will be looks like this. So we add this additional area, which is not true. If you use the A2, we only consider this area. Because the cross section will, should be uniform. Okay, it should be uniform. So we don't include this part in our 
solution, which is not true either. So, then, which A should we use? So, the best A to be used is the average A. Okay? So, we should use the average A, which is the one in the middle. Okay? The one in the middle for element 2 and for element 3. So that we will consider our elements, okay, it will be looks like this. Meaning that here we remove some of our original uh, structure, but we add some here. So that here we remove some, but here we add some. So that the error could be balanced. Okay, so in other words, if, if we have this type of problem, we have to do the geometry modification. So from this shape, we have to transform into this shape. So in this type of problem, or we would say that a complex shapes, if we use more elements, we need that our solution will be more accurate. Okay? Of course, when we use more acute, more elements, meaning that our shape will uh, become very close to the original shape. Okay, so next what we have to do, we have to determine this length. Okay, we have to determine this length. Right? So here is the information given to us. We have 150 here and the length, total length of the bar is 600. And then of course, we know that this distance is 25. Okay, so by using this triangle, I'm using this triangle, okay, to obtain the distance when x equal to 500, when the distance here x equal to 300, and the distance here, okay, the distance here, 500, 300, and this one, when x equal to 100. So by using this uh, ratio, okay, by using this ratio, so that I can determine the value of x, y, and z. Once you know this value, okay, and it should be symmetry here, it should be symmetry here, okay, and we know this, this distance, so that we can determine this value the red dot here okay so by using this this method or you can use other methods so we can determine the dotted line red line here okay so our cross-sectional area will based on this length so different element will have different area so once we have the constant area then only we can solve for the stiffness metric for each elements. Okay, so we have three elements. So each element has different cross-sectional area depending on this width area, width length. Okay, the width. So here is the material properties. We know the E will be constant. The whole bar is made from aluminium. And the length as we fulfill the requirement to, ha to have an equal length. So the length should be the same for each element. So by applying the formula for rectangular, okay, the simple rectangular, remember, it's just the width, okay, the width times with the thickness. So thickness is given by 2 millimeter, and for element 1, the width is 91.667 millimeter. And then we can obtain the uh, cross sectional area for element 1. Once we have this cross-sectional area, then we, we calculate the stiffness metric by using this equation and we obtain this stiffness metric for element 1. For element 2, the width of the element 2 is 75 mm, the thickness is 0 .2, uh, 2 mm, and then we obtain the cross-sectional area for element 2. Okay, and then we can calculate the stiffness metric for element 2. Okay, by using this equation.
The only difference is the A value. The rest will be the same. While for element 3, the width is 58.333 mm and the thickness is constant, 2 mm, then you can obtain the cross section area for element 3. And then we can determine the stiffness metric for element 3. Okay, don't forget to include this notation in your K matrix. Once we have the stiffness metric for each element, then we can obtain the, gl the global stiffness metric for the whole structure. So we just need to plug in all this K metric into this big matrix. Okay, and then you can solve the, the point that having the same nodes. Okay then you will obtain the global stiffness metric. Alright, so the next step will be the, to form the uh, system linear equation using F equal to KU. Okay, we, we know in this case, uh, we only have the applied load at the end of the structure at node 4. And then at node 1, we have a fixed joint so that we're going to have reaction force at node 1 and then the k matrix and as well as the unknowns next step will be the application of bondy conditions so we know in this case we only have one bondy condition which is u1 equal to 0 okay so when we know the u1 equal to 0 then we can eliminate row 1 and column 1 and then we obtain um, the reduced system linear equation so that we can solve the unknowns. So in this case, by using the calculator, then we can solve the unknowns and we obtain uh, the highest displacement occur at the end of the bar where the, the load has been applied. That's all for chapter 3.